would take it seriously or if they would kind of push me off to the side and think that it was just kind of some kind of fluke. But so far, you know, a majority of the response has been extremely positive, which I'm I'm thankful for, you know, but in that same sense, you know, I'm, I, I know I need to go out there and prove that I belong by my performance. You know what I mean? Just, just making an announcement and showing up and being here is one thing, but uh, getting out there and, and hopefully turning heads because my performance is there is a, is another. So that's the goal. And uh, we'll, we'll see, but, but like I said, uh, I've had so many drivers reach out and say, Hey, I'm so excited for you. And like, like I said, they're kind of, Few, few are taking me under their wing a little bit, even though I'm a lot older than them, but I'll obviously take as much uh, um, advice as possible and and, uh, and, we'll, and we'll see where it goes. Great. And take a look at the 20 race ARCA schedule. Is there a track you're kind of really looking forward to? And is it, on the flip side, is there one that maybe you're like, oh man, I, I'm, I'm really going to have a tough time when I get to that one? You know, it, it's funny because I haven't been anywhere, right? So I, I have zero racing experience well except for mid ohio i've been in mid ohio um in the back in the atlantic days so i'll be comfortable there and on the road courses but but no i mean obviously daytona is daytona so even being here is like uh mind mind blowing for sure uh, i'm uh, excited for the race but really everywhere i'm excited you know i i would say the two that i'm uh, the not not excited but a little i question how it's going to be I've, I've never been on dirt so there's two dirt races this year um so that'll be you know, an even steeper learning curve for me, but, right. but I'm, I'm ready for the challenge. And, uh, you know, as long as I, I can, uh, like I said, do my best, I, I, I know hopefully we'll, we'll be hunting for the championship at the end of the season. Great. Thanks, Frankie. Good luck. And I will see you a few weeks in Daytona. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Frankie, I have to imagine it's probably pretty strange to take advice from an 18 year old driver <laughs> who's been doing this for, for several years. And it's gotta be, gotta be a little strange. Uh, we'll go next to Steven Taranto. Steven, go ahead whenever you're ready. Frankie, I've got two questions for you, if that's all right. You, you, you talked a little bit about the process of finding a ride for the season and, and you talked about, you know, Mark Red and, and Terry Jones. So, so in that process, how important was it that you settled on a team with two owners who have a lot of equity in the Arca garage and who have been around for a really long time, like Terry and like Mark have? You know, I, like I said, I had an immediate uh, connection with Mark when we went to the shop and we met with him. But to be honest, I played in Corey LaJoy's kickball tournament a few months ago in, in uh, the Charlotte area. And I was essentially the only non-NASCAR driver there you know, and everybody was coming up to me, all the drivers and asking kind of what I thought I was doing. And I, everybody I brought Rhett up to was like, great guy. Like, oh, I, you know, that's a, a great spot for you to land. And, and that helped kind of solidify the decision as well. Cause for, you know, so many cup drivers and Xfinity drivers to tell me that he's a, he's a good guy and, and um, you know, has a great program going that, that, that felt great. You know what I mean? Cause you know, obviously I got to give myself every advantage I can, you know? Um, and if, Knowing that I know I'm gonna have a good car is is a uh, is is a nice feeling. So hopefully I I can meet the expectations uh, uh, that the the car <laughs> uh, has for me. <laughs> and then uh, there have been other actors who have uh, gone from you know their show business careers into uh, auto racing with, uh, with a level of success. Uh, obviously, everyone thinks of Paul Newman in that category. Uh, Patrick Dempsey more recently, uh, Steve McQueen is, is part of that. Is there anything, have, have you looked at their respective careers and is there anything that you've been able to glean from that as, as it pertains to developing yourself uh, into a professional in this, in this space and the success in this space? Well, I mean, obviously the fact that there's a pretty small list of, you know, actors turned racers that you list right if i if, if i can become you know even though i want to i want to be a race car driver i want people to think of me you know obviously i have my past and people will maybe know me as being a, an actor or whatever else i've done in the past but i want people to think of me as a race car driver like you think of paul newman as a race car driver you think of him as an actor um uh you think of him as uh, having amazing uh salad dressing you know those are all cool things but uh but so in that sense, like if, if I can be successful as a race car driver and people take me seriously as a race car driver, not necessarily having that actor slash race car driver uh, title, you know, th that would be pretty, pretty cool for me. But uh, it's not something that I, um, I haven't spent too much time looking at, into what they do because I'm kind of, 
you know, running my, my, my own program and have my own goals. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, in the end, uh, I, I can get on that, that list that you, that you named. Gotcha. Thank you, Frankie. No problem. And we will go to Terry Sabiston from right here in Daytona Beach. Terry, go ahead when you're ready. Hey, Frankie, uh, Terry Sabiston with WNDB uh, here in Daytona, coming to Daytona. And you've been here before, probably the only guy out there in the ARC series that's actually driven the pace car around <laughs> yeah. Daytona International Speedway. And that perspective of coming to Daytona is so special. Uh, and, and that's, I think, is important to the fans that it's important to you. But what's that perspective of coming to Daytona? You've taken laps around here last year. You, you've driven the pace car. But Daytona has that just special feeling of its own. You know, I'm 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 not just saying this to say this. I literally was walking out of the, the kind of the, the tunnel or where you walk onto the pit lane, and I got chills. You know, you see all the stands, you see you know World Center Racing, Daytona. You know, and it, it's an incredible opportunity to get to be here and to drive. Never mind get to race here next month. But uh, having been here in 2001, I I was in the pace car um, as a guest of Fox. Um, got to meet some of my favorite drivers. You know, growing up as a as a NASCAR fan that night um it's it's special to be here you know 22 years later and getting to do it myself um there's a cool little tidbit that i found out but the car that i'm driving today and probably the car i'll be driving next month for the race um is the chassis that sterling marlin uh used in that race in the 2001 um uh daytona 500 so it's kind of a weird thing there's a video of me in the pace car and the car right behind me is his is his car which i'm driving now so uh Kind of an interesting uh, little tidbit there, but uh, um, I don't know. It's 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 definitely special for sure. Also, the ARCA series has, uh, since you were here in, in 2001, has transitioned. It's totally changed. Uh, uh, safety features, the cars with the bodies on them. Used to be there was a scrapyard after these races in the garage area. Um, that's transitioned with the, the new body styles and, and, and the new cars. They're a lot safer, more comfortable uh, from from you know, really the team's point of view, what kind of work they can do on them, and NASCAR has taken it over. That's a big perspective of this, and how Ark has changed, I think, and something I think you, you got to look at. Yeah, I mean, obviously, being under the NASCAR banner is is amazing. Um, but in that sense, you know, racing in general has gotten safer, and I think that's you know a huge you know shout out to to everyone who's who's trying to obviously make it as safe as possible it is a dangerous sport you know there are going to be inc incidents um but in that sense um you know uh, i think they've done an amazing job but arca you know if you think of the cup drivers that are currently driving you know most of them went up through arca you know so it is the the path you know to get to where you know my end goal is this is the path i need to be on and, and hopefully i can perform well here to keep moving up follow-up question here the arca field the the variety of of types of drivers out there i mean you say you're the old guy but you know you go back to bobby gerhardt the, the other drivers there's there's a large variety of age and, and, and experience and adversity um what are you looking to take away from this practice practice session or learning out there on the track and and you know when you look back a year from now what's what's do you think is going to be the perspective you've got on on what you've learned from these group of people racing with them well, obviously this weekend, you know, it's my, it's my first time in the car with the, with my team. So getting comfortable with them, them getting to know me, me getting to know, you know, kind of the way that they work and the things, the feedback that they need. Um, obviously being at Daytona, you know, it's a intimidating racetrack. It's, it's super high speed. Um, being in the draft is a whole different beast. So we want to get as much experience being with the fast guys in the draft because really the next time I get to do that is in the race. You know, we get, I think one 45 minute practice session on Thursday and, and then qualify and, and, and we're racing. So I just want to be able to go away from this weekend feeling like I'm ready for that, ready to be kind of in the pack and, and uh, have no fear in that sense. Um, so that's obviously for this week, this, this weekend, long-term, obviously, you know, there's, there's so many drivers, there's, you know, cup guys that come down to do some of the ARCA races, there's Xfinity guys, there's truck guys, you know, so the competition is, is amazing. And, and really to get to the ARCA level for the most part, you know, you've had, most people had tremendous success, in the lower ranks, you know, in late models in super late models in legend car, whatever it may be. So uh, I know that I'll be competing against really, really good drivers. And uh, yeah, th that is a cool aspect about ARCA. There's a lot of, I, yeah, I call myself the old guy because there are 16 year olds who I'll be driving. I could literally be their father, you know? Um, but, but in that sense, you know, 
that's what makes this series and, and, and stock cars in general uh, really appealing to me is it is something that you can do for a long time. Um, and that's, that's my goal. I want to be in this sport for as long as possible, whether it's as a driver or in the future as a, as an owner, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's the goal. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Have fun here at Daytona. Thank you so much. And we'll go next to Seth Eggert with kicking the tires. Seth, go ahead when you're ready. Frankie, uh, First of all, congratulations on the ride. But Thank you. You, you did mention a little bit about the car you're going to be driving, it being Sterling Marlins number 40 from the 2001 Daytona 500. Have the weight of those connections and that history that you have to that day sunk in yet? You know, I, I'm not going to lie. It did. It was the other day that someone, had, I saw it on Twitter that someone put that there, and I, I put two, two and two together. And I called my mom. My mom was here at the race with me in 2001, and um, we actually were in Kenny Schrader's pit. I was wearing an m and M's jacket. Um, the fact that I was in the pace car with the 40 car, actually Sterling Marlin signed that jacket. Uh, Dale Earnhardt signed that jacket. And um, I was on the pit road uh, when Dale was getting into his car and, and he came up to me and he stopped me and he said, you know, I just have to say that, you know, your show has brought me and my daughter so much closer together. I love your show. And it was like insane to me that Dale Earnhardt is telling me that. You know, and so really there's there's three cars that I was tied to that day. And those three cars, obviously, you know, the end of the Daytona 500 in 2001 um, were involved in that in that accident that changed changed the sport tremendously. Um, so when I thought about all that, I called my mom and I go, I told her the story of how I'm driving that car. And it was just a it was a really weird feeling, like uh, amazing, like, you know, like uh, but it it did the memories of that day sunk in and um, impacted me a little bit. But uh, in that sense, um, you know, uh, I, I, I know, I know what it means for me to have this opportunity. And uh, I feel like all those, all that makes me feel like I'm in the place I'm supposed to be, you know what I mean? The fact that I, I can look back, you know, 22 years ago and, and have some interesting tie to, uh, to the car that I'm going to be driving today is pretty, pretty special for sure. And I know you've mentioned you want to be known more as a race car driver than an actor, but you have been in a couple of racing related movies, Racing Stripes and uh, Miracle in Lane 2. Did, did that fuel a little bit of your competitive passion, so to speak? Yeah, I mean, I've always been my whole life extremely competitive, you know, um, in everything I've ever done. I, I want to be the best I can be. But uh, yeah, obviously, you know, Miracle in Lane 2, I think I filmed that in 1999 or 2000, so like really, really early on in my career. And we filmed that at Irwindale Speedway. And I, you know, remember going to one of the races at Irwindale and I kept one of the tires. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. It was in my room for, for years when I was filming Malcolm in the middle. And uh, it was pretty interesting to, to in the end, be uh, driving at Irwindale this last year, you know, uh, in the late model and, and, in, and now coming here. It, 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 there is an interesting tie to kind of things I've done in the acting world that bring me to the racing world. But, but no, I mean, I, like I said, I, I'm, I race everything I can. I've got to be the fastest, you know, anything I'm doing, even walking, I, I, I got to get to that door before this person does, you know what I mean? That's how competitive I am. So um, I don't know where that comes from, but I've got that fire in me for sure. Thank you. No problem. I walked with you over here to the media center earlier today, and I can attest he, he likes to be first. <laughs> so, uh, we will go, and I believe this is Ben White. Ben, uh, I believe you are next. We will let you go when you're ready. Uh, Brandon White, Charles. Brandon. Oh, I'm sorry, Brandon. Go ahead. Yep. It's all good. Uh, uh, good good talk with you, Frankie. Um, Seth beat me to the question that I was going to ask you about the, the car you're going to be driving, so I'm going to instead talk about your co-owner, Terry Jones. I mean, he nearly pulled off the upset Daytona here in 2017, so – uh, since Terry knows how, how to work draft day, Daytona, what kind of advice has he given you about staying with the draft and getting up to the front of the field? Well, I drove down from Charlotte to Daytona yesterday with Terry driving, and uh, I learned that he's a little bit of a maniac behind the wheel. Um, so maybe I have to take take that. He was drafting the, the semi trucks on the, on the freeway, and he's like, "This is what it's going to feel like tomorrow." You know, he's right up on their bumper. Um, so uh, I learned that, but no, it's been cool to be able to get to hang with, with Terry and, and Mark and, and, and use kind of their experience and, and hear some of their stories to, to prep me for today. Um, I don't know. I, I just want to make them happy. I want to make them proud of the, the decision they made to put me in the car. And uh, hopefully, hopefully I can do that. <laughs> Thank you very much, Frankie. No problem.
and I saw that blur go by me on the highway yesterday. I can attest Terry Jones. <laughs> he still has a little bit of race car driver in him. <laughs> For sure. And we'll go next to Mark Crystal. Mark, go ahead when you're ready. Hi there, Frankie. Um, How's it going? In acting and TV films, I mean, last night I was flipping channels and there you were in an episode of Last Man Standing. Yeah. <laughs> driven a variety of different vehicles. You're a husband, a dad, now a full-time ARCA driver, and you're 36 years old. Does it seem it's surreal on a daily seven. basis? You know, when I look from the outside perspective, you know, and I think about all the things I've gotten to do, I go, wow, I've, I've definitely lived an extremely fulfilled life. In that same sense, maybe it's the drive that I have to experience as much as I can in my life. I know that, you know, you never know what's going to happen. You know, life, life is, is definitely short, but I want, I, I, in that same sense, I feel like I've done nothing. And I hope that doesn't turn you off when I say that, because I know I've been fortunate to do a ton. But I, I don't know, I want to look back at my life and, 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 you know, and, and even from the outside perspective of what people think of me and go, wow, he lived an extremely fulfilled life. I want to feel that way. And, you know, I, I can, I can fulfill my life in, in many different ways, but I, I've always strived to do the things that I, I, I love and that are tough things, you know, like I've, not, nothing that I've necessarily done is, is easy to get into, you know, or when you get into it, easy to be successful. And I think that's what drives me, you know, for myself, not even for anyone else. Like, it's just, that I want, I want to, I want to be successful in the things that I do for me and uh, for my wife and my, my, my family. But, uh, but no, I, I don't know. It's, uh, it's, it, it's tough. Cause like, like I said, I, I look back and I go, wow, you know, when, when I hear my bio, sounds insane <laughs> you know but i'm just me and i've only lived you know i i only know what it's like to be me so i still have got a lot of goals that i want to i want to reach you know and i don't know if i'll ever feel fully accomplished you know and and uh you know but hopefully along the way uh i uh make a, a lot of amazing memories and i've met some amazing people in my life and and i just know that throughout all the things i've gotten to do all the experience i've gotten to do it's made me a, a so much more of an appreciative person, like I said, for opportunity. And uh, I, I think that helps me reach that goal even faster. Um, Cause I, I don't, I don't take anything for granted anymore. And then my other question for you is you had the terrible accident uh, at mid Ohio, if I recall. Well, that was years ago. How would you, you know, Daytona it's fast. There's been bad accidents. How have you moved on and mentally prepared yourself for racing at high speeds and um, putting yourself, hopefully not in getting into an accident or injury, but putting yourself in a position where that could occur, unfortunately? Well, you know, as a race car driver, you know that there's possibilities of, uh, of, of being involved in accidents. Um, I think that's why you find so many young guys in the sport, you know, uh, 16 and 17 and 18 year olds are still extremely fearless. Maybe they haven't hit a wall hard enough to, to knock some sense in them yet. But in that same sense, if you're thinking about it, if you're thinking about that, there is a possibility that something may happen. It's probably time to hang up your gloves, you know, uh, put the helmet away. Um, Cause you know, you can't let that slow you down. You know what I mean? You can't let that, fear creep in or that, uh, I'll, you know, you got to take, you know, uh, chances when, when you need to take them and, and, and not let, uh, have any reservations. So, so I know there's a possibility being 37 years old, I get up, my back hurts, my knees hurt when I walk, you know what I mean? I know there's possibilities of getting hurt, but I, when I put that helmet on, it's, it's the last thing on my mind. You know what I mean? I'm, uh, I'm just trying to, to, to be as fast as I can for myself and for the team and, and, uh, finish as high up, uh, on the on the charts as possible. All righty. Well, uh, best of luck this season, and I hope forward to uh, hopefully meeting with the racetrack this year. For sure. I'll see you there. Thanks, Mark. We'll go next to David Hoffman at Speedsport. David, go ahead when you're ready. Hey, Frankie. Thanks for taking the time today. Uh, you know, what do you feel is going to be the biggest hurdle, especially these first couple of races, and knowing that you've had more of an open wheel background? 
I mean, there's so many hurdles. Um, obviously, just getting comfortable in the car. I've I've only tested an Arca car, I think, twice. You know what I mean? So I've got a, a lot to, to just get comfortable there, and I got to do it quickly. Um, I've never been to any of the racetracks, you know, so I, I can't take past experience, except for me, Ohio. I, I can't take past experience and go, oh, yeah, I've been there. Even just how to get on the pit lane, how to get out, you know, those things that you don't really think about um, until you're there. Um, but there's a lot of hurdles, uh, learning how to draft, learning how to race uh, a stock car. You know, it's a totally different experience than racing an open wheel car. But uh, I, I learned a lot in the, in the few races I did out on the West Coast in the late models this year. And I'm going to take that and, and I'm eager to learn. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm eager to listen to people and, and take as much advice as possible. And, and, uh, but there's, there's a lot of hurdles, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm ready for the challenge. And, and, and hopefully at the end of the season, you know, if we have another conversation like this, you know, I can say I, I, I successfully got, got through those hurdles and uh, got over those hurdles and, and uh, I'm, I'm either ready to progress or, or come back next year and, and be even better. Final question, just with this new career avenue, what type of impact do you want to make on both race fans and fans outside that may be kind of interested in, you know, what you're doing now? Well, you, you know, obviously if I can bring eyes to the sport who never really watched racing before, if they follow my acting career and they're interested in, in seeing what I'm doing, that's amazing. It's amazing. You know, for me, it's amazing for the sport. It's amazing for racing in general. And as someone who's a race fan and wants to be involved in the sport for a long time, awesome. If that, if that helps in that same sense, you know, I hope people see me out there and see that I, I belong. You know what I mean? Um, that's, that's the biggest thing. I don't want people to look at it and be like, oh yeah, he framed me. Yeah. He's out there. Yeah. Don't really, he's not very good. You know, I want to, I want people to think of me as a, as a good race car driver. So uh, uh, hopefully that's something that I, I, I achieve. <laughs> good luck this season. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll go next to my colleague, Tad Hayslip. And Tad, by the way, cars are on the racetrack here, so we might want to double check that our scoring is working just to be on the safe <laughs> side, but we'll, we'll let you go in here next, bud. That is good news. I'll make it quick so Frankie can get out there. Uh, Frankie, thanks for taking the time. Um, ever since your announcement was made Monday, there have been a, there's been an influx of jokes on social media, the uh, three wide middle jokes, uh, just so the announcers can say Malcolm Middle, are you already tired of these jokes or are, is this kind of one of those deals where like, you know, it's going to happen and you just deal with it? I'll say this for 23 years since Malcolm premiered, I don't think there's one photo of me on the outside, right? <laughs> Everyone always says, so I'm used to hearing the Malcolm in the Middle references on everything I, 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 I do in my life. But, you know, I'll be sure to make a Malcolm in the Middle shirt of me in the car. I'm going to capitalize on that before someone else does for sure. <laughs> so don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> the way to do it man turn it into some <laughs> revenue that's it i know uh, those casey, tires are expensive those tires are expensive that's right they don't pay for themselves that's right i know casey campbell had his hand up in the chat earlier today we'll go to casey before we wrap up here casey go ahead when you're ready pal thank you charlie uh frankie how are you bud I'm pretty good how are you doing well um so just kind of talking about this uh this 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 journey that you're on um, you're going to be in like the Midwest area a lot, of course, visiting, um, a lot of tracks in Wisconsin, Ohio, Michigan, um, Illinois, Indiana. W what do you feel like going all the way up to the Midwest? Cause that's where a lot of these races are. I mean, that's one thing that I love about being a race car driver and I, you know, bringing my son, get, getting my family to come with me and getting to, you know, experience different places and meet different people. That's part of the fun of, uh, of this sport, you know, is getting to go to places that maybe I normally, I wouldn't go. Um, so I, I'm excited. I'm excited to go every, everywhere on the schedule and, and hopefully meet as many people as possible and, and get them in, uh, you know, some Muniz racing, Rhett Jones racing gear and, uh, you know, make, make fans of them for sure. Yeah. And, and talk about to, uh, the goals for today on the racetrack. What do you, what do you want to accomplish today? I mean, we've got our, our own program that we're, we're ready to do. You know, we're going to do a bunch of single car runs at first, just to kind of make sure everything feels good on the car, get me up to speed. And then really the goal is just to get in packs, you know, get around the guys who I want to be racing with, you know, the fast guys out there and getting comfortable being in a draft. So if I can do that, that'll be a successful day today. And, and then hopefully tomorrow we'll just keep um, kind of going at it and, and getting quicker and quicker. And hopefully I'll be towards the top of the leaderboard <laughs> by the end of it. <laughs> All right. Um, Frankie, thank you so much, bud. Thank you. 
All right. Well, I do hear cars on the racetrack. We've got one more quick obligation for Frankie before he he gets out of here, but uh, we'll let everybody go. Thank you all so much for joining us. And if there's yeah, thank anything. You. This is Harrison Burton, driver of the number 21. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, check out one of these two videos beside me. Visit funstretch.com for more racing content.